is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Volusia Today. I'm Clayton Jackson with the Volusia County Community Information Division. Today, I am joined by, joined by my co-host, Heather Belden, and thank you so much for tuning in. Volusia Today is made possible by our sponsors, the Daytona Beach International Airport, the Ocean Center, Volusia Recycles, and Votran Public Transportation. How are you doing this morning, Heather? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I am doing fabulous. And speaking of fabulous, the county, the county's airport, had uh, some exciting news and event happen yesterday. Do you want to touch a little bit about that? Yes. So the new airline, Avello, had their inaugural flight from New Haven, Connecticut, which I heard has some of the best pizza in the country oh wow yeah so i think i might need to hop on a flight hey this is good pricing hop up there and hop on back right just for the weekend yeah, why not just, just grab grab a bite oh yeah and actually today the the um the second flight's coming in that's right delaware in the kind of philadelphia metro so if you're looking to go you know learn some nice history Ring the bell. Yeah. That's in Philadelphia. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, So speaking of tourism, uh, we actually have Georgia Turner, the executive director with the West Volusia Tourism Advertising Agency with us today, as as well as the... uh, the Parks and Recreation Director for Volusia County Government, Tim Bailey. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. So I guess a lot of people, we'll start with Georgia first. Okay. So I guess a lot of people, when they think of Volusia County, they think of our pristine beaches. And actually, we had beach safety on with us last week. Yes. Everybody's thinking the beach, um, the more east side of the county, all that. But there's actually a lot more um, exciting things going on on the west side of the county. Like, there's so much more than just the beaches. Am, am I correct in that? Uh, you're right, but I love the beach, too. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw you on the beach a couple of weeks ago. Yes, we but, did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, we have uh, 14 communities over in the western part of the county. And really the big thing that we've been focusing on within the last couple of months and really the last couple of years has been trails, trails, trails. We're very, very fortunate to have tons of trails, not only that um, run through you know different parts of the area, but also that run through the, the springs and connect the springs together. So trails, 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 that's what we talk about more than anything because we've made such a major investment with the county and our trail system. So we're real excited about what that has to offer. So when you say trails, we're looking at bike trails, walking trails, yeah, bike hiking, trails, hiking how, you know, however you want to be on the trail. I mean, it's it's really a cool thing because I know a lot of people that just go over, you know, just to walk every day. Um, it's a lot of times people think, well, do I need to have a bike? Do I need to have a you know certain kind of equipment or whatever it is? No, I think there's people that, you know, just go out and might, you know, hike a little bit of the trail on the on their lunch hour or something. Yeah. So it's um, it's really, really popular. We're very fortunate to be right in the middle of two major trail systems and tim will correct me and say three but i I'll, <laughs> i know more about the two so i'll talk about them but, uh, but we're in the middle of the coast to coast trail that's okay. about 250 miles that ultimately when it's finished it'll be going from titusville all the way you can get on a bike or hike or however you want to do it all the way from titusville over to tampa Oh, so wow. that's amazing. I mean, just to think 250 miles of trails, and there'll be people, those diehard people that'll do that. Right. And then we're also right in the middle of the um, St. John's River to Sea Loop that's five counties that starts um, in our area in, um, let's just say, DeBerry, Deltona, that area down there goes all the way up through Palatka. Then you can even go up through um, Marine, Lake, Marine Land, you know, St. Augustine, that area, all the way back down to Titusville, back to our area. And so we're just really fortunate. I mean, we're right in the middle of these two major, major trails, trail systems. So it sounds like you know a lot about them. What we would you say are your favorite little sections of the trails or? Well, that's like asking me who my favorite kid is. Oh, <laughs> yes, you uh, uh, Yeah. You, uh, you know, that. when you do have that many, you know, that many trails, I mean, and we have like 14 communities that we uh, that, I mean, really the trails touch just about every one of them, I would think, um, Tim. But, um, you know, so that's, I don't know. I, I love the trails, all of them. Um, we have a lot of interest, probably the most interest in the Spring to Spring Trail, which okay. I know Tim's going to talk about. But uh, that's really probably our, our most, you know, popular one, I would say. All right. So when people think of trails, maybe they're thinking a lot of gear, a lot of hiking boots, all mm-hmm. that good stuff. So does somebody have to have a certain level of skill, expertise 
to go on this or could he joe schmo like myself just take my take my brooks and yeah. hit the trails i don't know about the 250 miles you probably have to have some special well, hey, <laughs> hey. some special stuff for that but no i mean we're seeing you know i mean i, I see kids out you know adults just a, a little bit of everybody I means you know everybody from you know like little kids with little trading wheels on on you know all the way up to you know people that are really hiking and biking um, one of the things that um, we have that's that's really important in our area that brings a lot of people in year round is we have a uh, an event in November that's the Central Florida Legends that starts at uh, uh, Gemini Springs and the, it's a 5k a half marathon and a marathon that uh, you know people run on the trails and oh, so wow. that has really gotten to be popular so when you see people that really you know like look like they're training for a marathon or a 5k or whatever out on the trails that that might be who that is and we have those folks you know in town and in, in the area year round all right so do you have any memorable experiences from you personally being on the trails? Well, I'll have to tell you about that 5K and the half marathon and the marathon is that we um, see that, um, you know, well, I guess my favorite part is when people run back into the finish line and you can give them their medal for finishing those three. I mean, it's just the, the look on their faces, the sense of accomplishment. I know that if I, I, I keep saying every year, I'm going to go run, I'm going to train for that 5K every time I see it because it's just the look on their faces and they always come back, especially if they're from out of town. I think it's something like crazy, like 22 countries and 42 states oh, wow. that, that run this, this marathon. And they'll always go, this is one of the prettiest courses that I've ever run. Mm -hmm. It's just an absolutely gorgeous area out there, you know, to start in Gemini. And there's not, they don't go all the way around yet. I guess we're going to oh, do that yeah. at some point, yeah, oh. around uh, Lake Monroe. But they, you know, go out a certain way and then come back for the for the three races. So can we hold it to you that the next 5K that you're going to be running? <laughs> well, so I'm right here on the air, and, everybody. And then by, you know, like I say it in November, and that's uh, the right the weekend before Thanksgiving is when that's held, if anybody does want to start uh, training with me. I like that it's before Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. <It's> like, <laughs> hey, let's be realistic. Okay, plenty of time to train, folks. That's plenty right. of time. That's right. And you mentioned the trail was pretty and that reminded me, you know, I've been on the trail and I think there's so many places that allow for a nice shaded um, yes. experience. And I think especially in Florida in the middle of the summer, like what a cool thing to be able to just go on a trail and take a long walk, but not be absolutely blasted by that hot well, summer and, sun and that is what we're asked a lot right you know, like how you know what is the you know heat level this time of year but now you see people out there year-round which is really cool yeah all right so let's shift gears a little bit now um, shift gears <laughs> shift i gears. see yeah. what you did there yeah I, well actually i didn't even i didn't even throw that in there but hey that's perfect good catch on that um so tell us a little bit about the wings of the west merrill trail okay. well, that's a hard word for me to uh, say no, well me too so this uh, southern accent but yeah so that's uh, the one trails what we call the traditional trails that we just talked about and then the second one is the wings of the west uh, for those people here locally everybody has probably heard of eric a group who was um, working at a dress shop in downtown Deland and she was trying to pose her models all the time in front of this big green door and it was just ugly and they wanted a better backdrop for for the models to be able to, to show their dresses and everything so she asked Barb Shepard who owned the uh, the door <laughs> and on the building that the door was on if she could draw a, a pair of or a set of angel wings um, in chalk and they drew it it was beautiful beautiful backdrop and so people started coming over there and looking and, and you know just naturally they started posing in front of the wings mm -hmm. so then they would wash away it was just in chalk so then she asked barb can i do this permanently and all of a sudden it was just a internet sensation and i mean probably thousands of people within that first couple of years this is back in 2014 and th th thousands of people came and you know took their photos and everything there so um, anyway when I came on about seven years ago we asked Erica if she could draw more wings because we have all of these um, you know attractions that have something to do with wings we have the um, and the ones that she other ones that she did was at the airport out in at skydive to land she drew a pair of by wings by, by plane wings um, at the Lyonia preserve she did a pair of scrub jay wings Aww. at lake woodruff she did a pair of swallowtail kite wings mm -hmm. at um casadega she did uh angel wings 
So, I mean, it's not angel, fairy wings in their fairy trail. So it's just, it's really just become a, a very interesting thing where people from all walks of life, um, bikers, <laughs> mm-hmm. during bike week, people come with their motorcycle and, you know, and, and pose in front. But a lot of people were putting their pets and their children in front of the big wings and, or, you know, like doing Photoshop and, and, and making them smaller. So Erica had a baby. Uh, right after she did the the five sets and she did one more so it's a small one where and her little boy was the person that unveiled it and her dog was the second so her little boy was the first one that had his photo made and the dog was the second one so it's it's really that's been a you know it's just kind of like you make tourism out of you know just something quirky like that but that's really brought a lot of people and people are still coming after that you know that long of a time to downtown to land and saying can I have my photos made in front of the wings yeah I love in the land and I take people down that alley mm-hmm. every single time and I'm like this is kind of like a little local yeah. spot yeah. like you have to hit this it's Insta- kind of a Instagram, right of passage you know Instagrammable uh, Facebookable mm-hmm. <laughs> their hashtag their photo, hashtag, yeah, hashtag wings, uh, of, the wings west. of the west yep nice so, yeah so and land wings so are there any more coming um, right now we get asked that question every day yeah but right now we're working with uh, River of Lakes Heritage Corridor to possibly do some more um, murals throughout the area so I wouldn't be surprised if there were some more wings we still think that there should be a monarch wings just because we're the a monarch city mm-hmm. in, in the land so I, I wouldn't be surprised if those are a, a lot of those are coming oh that's awesome all right so before we go to our first break is there a, some another event that started today yes there's a trail that started a probably my favorite trail because those that kevin would give me a hard time because he knows that i'm a beer drinker but uh, a couple <laughs> of years ago we started in 2020 uh, we started something called the cool craft beverage trail uh, we wanted people to know a lot of times they said that the summertime or any time is it's warmer over on the west side of the and we said no it's always cool over there because you can come into a brewery you can come into a, a you know a place that has craft cocktails you can come to all different kinds of places over there somewhere that just had a, a nice unsweetened tea or iced tea so we put together a group and now we're up to probably like about 25 or 30 businesses that have joined us with what we call the Cool Craft Beverage Trail. And this summer, starting today, which is Pink Flamingo Day, that if you didn't know that, (laughs) we are partnering with uh, Flamingo Magazine to um, have about 20 uh, both alcoholic drinks and non-alcoholic drinks that you can come um, and go around the, the trail on your own, drink the drinks, and vote for them on the coolcrafttrail.com slash summer. And at the end of the end of the season, I guess you'd say it's it starts today and then goes through Labor Day. We'll have um, the People's Choice, which will be that vote on the website, and then we'll also have Flamingo Magazine. Their team of judges will come in and judge the top ones. So um, it's going to be a, a fun one. This is the second year in a row that we've done it, and last year we just had hundreds of people that uh, went on that website and voted for their favorite drink. Nice. And they sound great this year. <laughs> they By do. The way. I, I may have participated in a few uh, <laughs> tastings last <laughs> summer, and I'm happy to volunteer as a judge you if needed. Just, just go vote, vote, vote. And, That's what we tell everybody. And just again, before we take a quick break, it is family friendly. It is. And there are non alcoholic There are non alcoholic. There's about 10 and 10. 10 alcoholic drinks and 10 um, non alcoholic drinks. Wonderful. All right, everyone, stay with us. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Subscribe to the Volusia County YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to know what's happening in your hometown. There are so many great places to explore and things to learn. With over 1,000 videos available right now, the channel offers something for everyone. Let's go! Did you know we have countless features showcasing history, nature, wildlife, and recreation? Subscribe! And hit the bell icon. Or that we live stream important county meetings and workshops where leaders make decisions that can impact our everyday lives. Did you subscribe yet? Or that we record our weekly radio show, Volusia Today, where we interview staff from the different divisions and departments across our great county, and they discuss the nitty gritty of their field and expertise. Go ahead, subscribe. But that's not it, there's more. Subscribe and hit the bell icon and fully explore. Score. 
We're back. I'm Heather Belden along with Clayton Jackson, and you're listening to Volusia Today, a public information program brought to you by the County of Volusia. So now joining us is Tim Bailey. He is the longstanding director of the county's Parks, Recreation, and Culture Division. Good to have you on the show, Tim. Yep, thanks for having me. Of course. So um, kind of going right back to the trails conversation that we were having with Georgia, um, what is new in trails? Well, there's a couple of things going on. I I know there's... uh, a lot of anticipation on the connection of the Spring to Spring Trail from Lake Beersford North, Lake Beersford Park North, to Minnesota, which is currently where the, the trail ends, right? Uh, that, that's the gap that everyone's looking to get completed. So we're uh, currently right now, we're in the mid- middle of a feasibility study. We're identifying the alignment. There's going to have to be some public acquisition to connect those pieces together. That's the challenging part in that, that specific gap. Um, once we have all that worked out and all the property is in public ownership, uh, we'll be moving forward in the construction phase. It'll be funded in part by uh, the Sun Trail program. The, uh, the state Sun Trail program helps fund a lot of our trails throughout Volusia County. So we're, at, we're all looking at trying to get that section completed. The other uh, uh, interesting point that we're, we're moving forward, forward is uh, the restroom at Marine Discovery Center on the east side of the county. Uh, we've been working with the Marine Discovery Center uh, leadership on, on getting that open. It's pretty close now. I think we're within a couple of weeks of having that opened. Uh, and then that you'll be able to use that as a trailhead, plus uh, be able to go, if you go over that bridge there, you'll be able to access the beach. And so for the East Siders that are listening, kind of back on that spring to spring trail conversation, what does that trail connect? So spring to spring is actually a part of uh, the, the St. John's River to Sea Loop, you know, as we were talking about earlier. And, and that also is a part of the eastern boundary of the heart of Florida, right? So that, and that section is important because once you connect that piece, you can go all the way from currently from Spring Garden Ranch Road, just north of DeLeon Springs, we're in DeLeon Springs area, south to DeBerry. And then you can go over the, the St. John's Bridge into the Seminole County Trails, which goes all the way to the uh, West Orange Gap, which is a small gap. And then once you get past that gap, you can go all the way to the center of the state. So there's qu- quite a bit of contiguous trail once that gap's completed. Uh, and then if you go east, you can go all the way to New Smyrna. Um, okay. New Smyrna Beach at 10th Street. That's currently where it ends. Or you can go down into uh, Brevard County, and it ends right there in Titusville currently. There, Brevard County's role there is to connect that section over to the beach. So that would be uh, the last piece that they got to create. Do you see a lot of bikers that will go from a spring and swim and then get on their bike and go to another spring and swim there? Right. I think it's getting more and more, you know, um, uh, in, f- uh, in terms of people trying to uh, being becoming aware of that spring to spring trail. Uh, folks are coming from all around, um, internationally and around the state and around the nation to, to get on Volusia County trails. Yeah, I can't imagine like a hot summer day, you're on your bike, you're on the trail, and then you get to dive into Blue Springs. Like that right. just seems like the yeah. perfect day. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, folks would, would uh, you know, park at Lake Beersford Park, go south into the Blue Spring State Park, grab lunch, uh, hop back on their bike or walk back up to Lake Beersford Park. It makes for a great day. Yeah. All right. So a big thing that Parks and Rec stresses is safety of the people who participate in the trails. So would you like to share with our listeners some of the safety tips from the director himself? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, our, our uh, website also will give you some, some tra- uh, trail guidelines or some park uh, trail rules, right? So, but in general, speed, speed, speed is kind of really where we want to want to be. 20 miles or less. Uh, if you're going faster than that, it's really tough to... Uh, uh, protect the people that are in front of you you know as you're going to if you're if you're on a trail you got maybe two people in front of you or two people with a dog or a child and if you're going too too fast even when you say coming on your left uh there's the unpredicta- old, the old unpredictability <laughs> yeah or the or your <laughs> bell right there's some unpredictability and you got to try to swerve out of the way and, and, and if someone's doing something unpredictable uh in front of you so you really want to try to try to pay attention to your speed you know go slowly let people know you're coming right give them a, a wide berth right that's why we kind of you know have a 12 foot wide paved tra- paved trail to try to get you know folks to to operate safely on the trail. And then the other uh, elements, um, you know, as long as you're, you're, you know, you have your safety gear on, especially when you're, you're turning corners, you, you want to stay on the proper side because if you're turning a corner and you have a line of sight that's only 40 feet, 
if someone is sailing uh, the, in the opposite direction and you're sailing the, uh, the, the towards them, uh, your reaction time is going to be, you know, a couple of seconds. So you really want to try to gauge yourself through those areas. Well, I promise you, if I'm hitting a trail in a buck, I'm not hitting 20 miles per hour. <laughs> I, can, right. I can give you my right. word on that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Safety <Yeah>. first. <laughs> Um, so, you know, do, as the county, do we have organized rides that people are able to kind of join up on? Right. So uh, there's a lot of nonprofits out there. St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance runs a lot of uh, uh, events throughout the year on our trails. Uh, DeBerry Hall also runs a lot of events on our trails. So I would shout hit, out Tracy and yeah, Lisa. That's right. Yeah, that's right. They do a great job. So those two sites, if you're interested, pay attention to those sites and they have they have rides going on all the time. All right. And, uh, you know, other than the trails, Parks is always busy. You're one of the busiest people in the county. What's uh, something else that's kind of up and coming here with Parks and Rec and Culture? So, well, we, our summer program kicked off uh, last week. It, it, uh, we've got 13 sites. If you go to our, our web page and you click on Recreation Programs, we have uh, our, uh, there's over, th I think there's 13 sites currently this year. It's an $80 uh, weekly fee and a $20 registration fee. And we're going on anywhere between two to two and a half field trips per week uh, with the kids. Uh, we're going to a uh, variety of different places. Dave and Buster's is one of the places we're going to uh, Daytona Lagoon. So fun. You go to the That's theater. Awesome. Uh, we go to um, uh, bowling and a uh, variety of different spots throughout the, throughout the year. So uh, we've got approximately 1,300 kids uh, wow. summer uh, in, wow. our, in our program. Um, the other uh, fun spot, Daytona Playhouse, bowling, movies, Daytona Lagoon, those are the, so, the spots. And you have sites spot. across the entire county. Yeah, there are, yeah they're equally distributed, wow. distributed throughout the county, east side and west side, north and south. And what about uh, the days that they're not doing a field trip? What, are, what does a day back at camp look like? Yeah, so there's always something to do, you know, uh, on the stay back days. Uh, we pick the site, so there's some kind of interest to the individual site, so the kids aren't you know, just idle. There's always something to do. <laughs> Gemini Springs is an example where they fish, they kick ball, they play games, they're watching movies. There's all kinds of things during during the day. Well, fun fact, Clayton, I was a Volusia County Parks, Recreation, and Culture Summer Camp Counselor when I was a teenager. So this is oh. something that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> yeah. And she's actually proud of that because she's actually told me that before. So that's, that's <laughs> the great work that your yes. team do, does. I've been an employee yeah. with Lewis yeah. County longer than most, that's I can right. say. And uh, I met my husband there, and I also beat a ton of kids in Uno. So, <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> sorry, yeah. kids. We, Volusia yeah. County's been operating a summer program for a long time. Yes. Yep. All right, so there's another thing coming up on the horizon, the um, Veterans Memorial Plaza. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yep. That, now, for those of you that don't know, Vet Veterans Memorial Plaza will be located on the northwest corner of the Tomstead Veterans Memorial Bridge uh, in Daytona Beach, right? And so um, it'll be um, uh, the people that have fallen in war will be identified on each one of those individual plaques. There'll be a fire feature, you know, during special events. All the flags of the military are all also distributed uh, on the site. There's a memorial, uh, a World War II memorial. That'll be a replica of the current memorial that's at Tuscawilla Park, and that'll be located on site as well. The Sweetheart Trail in, in Daytona Beach kind of rolls through that area there, so it'll be a nice added bonus to the to the, uh, the, the city of Daytona Beach's Sweetheart Trail. So we're looking forward to getting that underway. And, and I, I think right now we're planning on having that completed by the fall of next year, 2024. That's exciting. Oh, right. That's great. All right, so before we go to our last commercial break, Tim... Here, this is your time, your selling point. Why do you, why do citizens need to come out to enjoy our wonderful parks that we have? Right. So you know, Volusia County is as as we were talking about earlier. You know, Volusia County is uh, blessed with a lot of different assets, from from the ocean to the river, and all of the different ecosystems that we have. You know, scattered throughout Volusia County, including our conservation lands, which we really haven't talked a lot about. But there are nature trails and horseback riding trails through the uh, through the real Florida area. So there's so many different activities and, and diverse uh, uh, ecosystems to travel through. I think we really separate ourselves from the rest of the counties surrounding us with all the diversity we have in Volusia County. 
All right. We heard it first from Tim Bailey. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we're going to take our last commercial break. Stay with us with more Volusia Today. Subscribe to the Volusia County YouTube channel. And hit the bell icon to know what's happening in your hometown. There are so many great places to explore. And things to learn. With over 1,000 videos available right now, the channel offers something for everyone. Let's go! Did you know we have countless features showcasing history, nature, wildlife, and recreation? Subscribe! and hit the bell icon. Or that we live stream important county meetings and workshops where leaders make decisions that can impact our everyday lives. Did you subscribe yet? Or that we record our weekly radio show, Volusia Today, where we interview staff from the different divisions and departments across our great county, and they discuss the nitty gritty of their field and expertise. Go ahead, subscribe. But that's not it, there's more. Subscribe and hit the bell icon and fully explore. Score. We're back. I'm Clayton Jackson with Volusia Today. So, Georgia, where can people go to learn more about all the exciting tourism that's going on on the west side of the county? We have a brand new website that's visitwestvolusia.com that has some great information just really about everything So, and about that cool craft beverage trail that I told you about. Sounds wonderful. And, Tim, um, what about the master plan that's happening? You want to touch on that really quick? Yep, we just uh, wrapped up all of our public meetings, so we are planning on bringing the Trails Master Plan to County Council probably in August, right? But uh, there are th our, uh, 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 availability in terms of looking at the interactive trail map on our website. If you go to volusia.org, you select Parks Recreation, and you click down on the trails, uh, the, the Trails Master Plan will be identified there. There's also a trail survey, which will be automatically up uh, staying online, you know, 365 days a year for us to get comments on what your trail experiences are, uh, plus an interactive map. And that interactive trail map can show users where all the existing trails are, as well as all the proposed trails that we have. Uh, and that'll be a living, breathing document that'll change through time as we identify different alignments and better connectivity. Uh, excellent information. So, again, everybody, Volusia County, we love our beaches. We're known for our beaches, but there's so much more to Volusia County than just that. With that, we're going to wrap up. Thank you so much for listening, and have a wonderful weekend, Volusia County. If you have a comment about Volusia today or if there is a topic you would like to hear featured, please contact Volusia County Community Information at 1-866-345-0345.